Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is John. I'm from the Financial Aid Office here at John Jay College, and we'll be going through Paying for College, your guide to financing your education. First, we'd like to take you to take a look at some of the tuition rates we have um, for undergraduate students in state. The full-time tuition is $3,465. And for undergraduates from out of state, it's a per credit tuition of three of $620. Now, this is important because as a full-time student, any credits above 12 credits have a fixed flat rate of 3,465 per semester, where beneath that, you would be subject to the part-time rate of $305. Now, out-of-state students don't have that uh, flat rate tuition, so theirs would be the standard $620 per credit overall, regardless of how many credits they take. Uh, the fees are also included here. And essentially what this comes out to for the 1920 academic year is approximately $3,720.20 for an undergraduate semester of study here at John Jay College. Now, that is competitive with many of the schools uh, locally where you might see tuition rates for private schools is much higher, such as Pace at 44714 um, and even competitive with our SUNY uh, counterparts, such as SUNY Albany, at $7,070 per academic year. So we find that the value you'll get for your money here at John Jay is also quite significant. Now the first step in applying for financial aid would be completing your FAFSA. Now what you have to do first is get a, an FSA ID. This is a unique identifying number that will allow you to sign and validate your FAFSA so that we can review it here in the financial aid office to determine the eligibility for the various programs in financial aid that you can receive. The application can be found at www.fafsa.gov and the six digit code for John Jay College here is 002693. It is very helpful for you to have your family's tax information available when you complete the FAFSA. So that's your 2018 IRS tax return and your parents' 2018 IRS tax return. It is also very helpful that if you have already filed those taxes for that year, to use the IRS data retrieval tool, which will allow you to import that information directly from the IRS and into the FAFSA without having to refer to the tax returns uh, at all. Another part of financial aid would be applying for your TAP award. This is for New York State residents who are going to a college within New York State. The New York State Higher Education Services Corporation, or HESC, administers the TAP program. And there is a link from the end of the FAFSA to complete the TAP application when you have completed the FAFSA. So it will take you right to it. But you can, figure, uh, you can complete the form separately. So you can go to hesk.ny.gov to complete the TAP application, even if you don't complete the FAFSA first. Like the FAFSA, John Jay College has a TAP code of 1414 that needs to be entered in order for us to receive the information from your TAP application. The Excelsior Scholarship is for New York State residents only. It is subject to an income requirement. This is a total household requirement. So this is student and family members have a total household income of $125,000 a year or less for the 2019-20 uh, academic year. Uh, the students must attend full-time and take courses toward their degree. Uh, there is a maximum of $5,500 per year for a maximum of eight semesters that can be awarded should the student be eligible. And there must be a commitment to remain in New York State for the number of years the student received the Excelsior Scholarship. Now the, the caveat with that is that if the student decides to leave New York State after receiving the Excelsior Scholarship, the amount of money they re received as a scholarship will turn into a loan if they 
leave the state. So they must remain in state in order to keep that scholarship money, grant money, and instead of it converting to a loan. The Jose Peralta Dream Act is for students who are undocumented, but they can apply for New York State aid through, the, uh, through this gateway. And I'd like to just take a few minutes now and talk about the types of financial aid that are available to a student. The first is called grants. Grants are money that don't need to be paid back. This is really the best kind of financial aid you could have. This is either a scholarship or it's Pell Grant or it's TAP money. Uh, what it is is that that money is there. It directly reduces your outstanding balance to the school for any particular term and it never has to be paid back. So that's terrific. It's the most free money you can have. The second type is loans. Now, loans also reduce the balance. If a student decides they want to take loans, it also reduces the balance to the school. But unlike grants, loans have to be paid back. Uh, there are several types of loans. The William Ford direct loan, or the uh, direct loan as we refer to it here, uh, can pay up to $5,500 a year for a freshman student. And as a student progresses academically, to junior and sophomore, or sophomore and junior and, uh, and so on, that amount goes up to $7,500. There is the Federal Direct Plus Loan Program for students' parents who want to borrow for undergraduates on behalf of them so that they can pay uh, to pay their educational expenses. The uh, Parent Plus Loan is subject to a credit check, so it's not a guaranteed student loan as much as it is dependent on whether the, there is credit worthiness on the part of the borrower. It's not a hard credit check. It looks for, uh, the application looks for hard credit hits like bankruptcies, charge-offs, judgments, and things of that nature to determine credit worthiness, but refrains from debt to income ratio or any of the other elements of a traditional uh, loan credit check. Beside that, a student may also look for an alternative loan, which is a loan that they would, uh, they would apply for through a bank or a, uh, a financial institution. These are subject to the credit, uh, you know, credit terms of the bank so that they can uh, have the best possible option of securing the, uh, the, most, uh, the best loan for them. It's suggested that students should go shopping make sure that they find a loan program, an educational loan program, that offers them the best terms. The school is not, is not allowed by law to direct a, school, a student to a particular lender. So it is up to the student to find out where the best, uh, the best loan program is if they seek an alternative loan. Uh, but my best advice would be start with any, any financial institution or bank that you might have a relationship with and that way, you'll be able to, if you don't find success there, you'll be able to at least find more information about where you can look. Scholarships and special opportunity programs. Um, every student is encouraged to apply for scholarships right through the John Jay website. As you can see, there's a website in the bottom of the page. Students are not automatically packaged with scholarships, but there are a number of scholarships available for virtually every type of student. So if you're an undergraduate student, look for undergraduate scholarships. If you're a particular major, look for scholarships available for that particular major. If you are, say, a criminal justice major, but you apply for a scholarship that a biology student would only be eligible to receive, you would be disqualified from receiving that scholarship because it, the terms don't apply to, to you. So please make sure that it is specific. If you are looking for a scholarship that's specific to your program, that you apply for those scholarships within that program. And again, I would please uh, spend some time researching the, uh, the scholarships under that website. There are a great many, and it's very helpful for the student and the parent to know what they are. The search portal, when the student decides they want to 
look at scholarships, the search portal is right there on John Jay. It looks very much like this and is very easy to, uh, to, to do their research and find out exactly what they're eligible for. Uh, one more thing, please be mindful of the scholarship application deadlines. There are, each scholarship may have different deadlines, but also has, but they all have some similar requirements, such as a personal statement, you know, such as a reason why you feel you would be the best candidate to receive this particular scholarship. But if a student misses a deadline, they unfortunately make themselves ineligible for it. So please keep, my, keep in mind that deadlines are important for these, for these scholarships. Cost of attendance. So essentially what this is is a composite of what the school fees are as far as tuition and fees go and some other expenses like commuting and books that are rolled into what's called cost of attendance. This is important for financial aid in the sense where no, that we can't award financial aid in excess of any student's cost of attendance. And those circumstances can sometimes dictate what that COA is, such as if you're a student living in a dorm, your cost of attendance might be higher because we have to factor in the dorm expenses. But if you're living at home, that would be lower and your cost of attendance would be lower. In almost all cases, this does not affect the student's eligibility to receive financial aid. I've never seen it in my experience. So it really matters to you to put what circumstance is most applicable to you when you file your FAFSA. And that way the correct cost of attendance is generated. And then regardless of the structure of your financial aid package, whether it's a combination of Pell and TAP and Excelsior and loans or whatever combination thereof, you will receive the correct amount of financial aid. Now, remaining financial need. Now, um, this is mathematically what it is, is the cost of attendance minus the EFC. When you complete your FAFSA, ultimately what you get is a number, an expected family contribution, which is a value that um, it's not really in dollars, but it is used to calculate how much Pell Award a student may or may not be eligible for based on their family's income and resources. So mathematically speaking, the remaining financial need would be the cost of attendance minus the expected family contribution. But I'm pretty sure that as a student, the only place you're going to see this is on this slide. So don't worry about it too much. Uh, what makes up the cost of attendance? Direct costs and indirect costs. Direct costs are something like tuition, fees, books, and supplies. And then the indirect costs are the stuff we mentioned before, like housing or transportation expenses. And they all come together to form the cost of attendance number that uh, every student's financial aid uh, maximum is subject to. There is a significant financial support office for veterans. Uh, we would encourage our veteran students to apply here. Every student who is a, who is a veteran is eligible for in-state tuition, regardless of whether or not they are from New York State. But as a part of the thank you for their service, we treat them as in-state students for tuition purposes. Uh, there's also an, an application fee waiver. And as well as the military benefits that they may, eligible, may be eligible for, uh, we would also encourage every veteran to apply for their federal and state aid to make sure that they get the maximum amount of financial aid that they would be eligible for. If there's any other information the student needs on financial aid, I would please encourage them to look at the financial aid website uh, listed above at cuny.edu slash financial aid. Or we'd be happy to meet with you in the office. Uh, or you can see the J Express office when you come to campus. Either way, we welcome you to the John Jay community. And good luck. <laughs>